What's up, everybody? Here we are with the Energy is Love podcast. It's been in full swing now for a little while, a couple weeks, maybe a week. I don't know. It's going great. We're loving everything that we're doing, and we're loving everybody that we're getting to talk to and meet and spreading this love and this energy out there. So I'd like to thank our sponsors for the show, Crystal Water Float Spa. Go online, crystalwaterfloat.com, or find them on Facebook at their Facebook page. You can just search Crystal Water Float Spa. Um, it's a sensory deprivation experience. You get inside the tank, you float. I know I've talked about it a lot, but if you haven't checked it out, if you don't know about it, go online, go to their website, go to their Facebook page, just go Google floating, go Google sensory deprivation tanks and see what it can offer and see what it can do for you. Crystal Water Floats always offering great deals and specials. Come check them out. Perfect time to check them out. It's this Saturday, June 4th. We're having our spiritual intuitive fair there. It's going to run from 10 to 6. It's going to be a good, good opportunity not just to check out the spa and check out the tanks and find out more about what they do. It's going to be a really good opportunity to come out and get some energy work done, get some healing done. Even just sit before somebody and let them read your cards, let them read your palm. Uh, Michael Ingleby, he's going to be there. He's been on our podcast. Lady Luna will be there. Uh, Kat Meyer. We've got a handful of people that are going to be there that you've heard already on the podcast and some that you haven't heard yet, but they're going to be on the podcast as well. So come out, say hello, check them out. Remember, it's Saturday, June 4th at the Crystal Water Float Spa. That's 40 West Vine Street in Tula, Utah. We also need to thank our sponsor, Debry Man, supporting small businesses for the past 10 years. Debry Man has done quite a bit for this podcast and it wouldn't be what it is today without his support. If you're enjoying the podcast and you're enjoying listening, by all means, donate. We've got a GoFundMe account set up. You can go find that on our Facebook page. We've got it linked there. Also, go and just search it out on GoFundMe. It's The Energy is Love. We're also always looking for new sponsors. If you want to become a sponsor of the podcast, we'd love to have you. Reach out and contact us. You can email us at energyislovepodcast at gmail.com or go to our Facebook page and message us there. You can find us on Facebook at Energy is Love Podcast. Um, We'd love to have more sponsors and we'd love to get everybody's information out there so that we can spread the love and spread the energy out there and expand everybody's mind, expand the consciousness, uh, all that kind of stuff. On the Energy is Love podcast today, my guest is Ingrid Maria. Ingrid is an amazing person who practices all sorts of metaphysical methods when she works with clients such as tarot cards, pendulums. Uh, all sorts of other types of energy works that she incorporates into her sessions with people. She participates in a lot of fairs and events hosted around the Salt Lake Valley and up north in the Ogden area. Uh, I've known Ingrid for a little over a year now, and she's one of those people that, you know, as soon as you meet her, she kind of just clicks with you, and she's got a really good personality, a really good sense of humor, and she's just funny as hell. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Um, go check out her stuff online. Uh, Ingrid goes by Lady Luna. So you can go find her Facebook page. Just search Lady Luna and you can find out more about her. She's going to also be at our Spiritual Intuitive Fair up here um, at the Crystal Water Float Spa on Saturday, June 4th. So listen to the podcast and then come out and meet her in person and sit down and have a session, have a reading with her and see all the amazing things that she can help you with. But thanks for the support, guys, and thanks for listening. Here we go. It's the Energy is Love podcast. Energy is love. The Energy is Love Podcast. Energy is Love. The Energy is Love Podcast. The Energy is Love Podcast. The Energy is Love Podcast. Podcast for the universe. Energy is Love. (laughs) (laughs) That's perfect. What's up, everybody? Today on the Energy is Love Podcast, my guest is Ingrid Maria. That's right. That's how you pronounce your name, obviously. Correct. Okay. Ingrid goes by Lady Luna. Tell me a little bit, Ingrid, about what it is when it comes to your specific kind of energy work. I know you do cards, but what else? Actually, I do the combination. I call it a combo because it's between reading the energy, using the cards only as a tool. And also, if one spirit or your spirit guy wants to come over and manifest, I speak out whatever is the message. And also... Through all of that, I know there is a hint of healing. Yeah. I think any time you work with somebody, you always have some little sub-frequency of healing energy that is there and that's present. Yeah, but basically, I know that is because of the comments. It's not just, oh, you did a reading, you helped me. It's more like, you helped me, but I feel more at ease, more at peace. Yeah. So. Well, good. What I want to do is I want to tell the story about how we met, because Do you know what I mean? We've known each other for almost a year, I think. Correct. We met last summer. What it was was um, 
it was one of the very first events that I was doing, one of the first little events fairs that I did, and it was up in Ogden. And I was brand new. I hadn't really ever done anything. I mean, I'd done a lot of energy work in my own kind of space with people that I know and everything like that, but I was coming out of the closet and I was doing stuff. Mm -hmm. So I went to this fair up in Ogden, not really knowing what to expect, and that's where we met. Correct, correct. Do you remember that day? Yes. Actually, for me, it was a, a different environment. So I went to do something that I didn't know what to expect or what to do. Well, I knew what to do, but not what to expect from that. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect either. And I barely knew the people, the organizer. was it very general. Uh-huh. So I remember, and I remember something in particular when we start talking, you were outside, uh-huh. and I was like, oh, my gosh, inside, go outside. And we talk about what you do and everything and what I do. And then you say something. I always remember that. That was his, like, what you are afraid of. That's, just that's just do I it. Said? Yes. You just say, just do it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you know. And that is stayed in my mind. I remember I smiled. And I went to visit friends. I drove back to Salt Lake, and that was in my head. And from that moment, everything that I was trying to do or want to do, and I have that hesitate moment, your voice came over there. <laughs> you know, and I was like, uh, okay, that is something here, you know. Yeah. It's not just a phrase, but you really touch my soul. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. That's really beautiful. It, it's always... Always I share that with people Mm -hmm. because that was like the push to keep going. Very nice. I never knew that. I didn't realize that. I told you that. Did you tell me (laughs) that? (laughs) And you just (laughs) smiled, you know, but, you know. Uh, I know that for me on that day it was, like you said, I was sitting outside. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know the organizers of the event either. I didn't know what to expect. And for me it was, um, I don't even think I read for anybody that day. Mm-hmm. I don't think I did anything that day. I kind of hung out outside and enjoyed being in nature and reading my book. But the highlight was meeting you, and that was a really nice I think nice so, thing. too. Yeah. yeah, because that was very quiet, nothing. And suddenly is this. It's like, oh, my gosh, this person is from that I never met. Now mm-hmm. I, I don't know anything about you. <laughs> you were reading a book, and I was like me talking. Yeah. But it was very substantial for me. And I appreciate it. Well, cool. I think, you know, our story of how we met, it's a good example of kind of where you just never know what to expect. You know, I'm sure we both went to that event, that fair, with kind of an idea of what we were kind of hoping to get out of it. But obviously, the point of that event, the point of us being there was for us to meet. Yeah, I think the universe, you know, works in mysterious ways. Yeah. And then you, I think, were a big help when it came to me getting... um, getting involved with the Soul Works Fair and oh, with cool. kind of making that connection with Betty and everything involving there. And that's been a huge thing for me. And so ever since that point, you know, that's kind of where, when I say my career, I don't know if this is necessary. It is my career. This is what I do. But that's kind of the tipping point for me when everything started to change and started to kind of advance, I guess. So, we help each other without knowing, right? Yes, <laughs> very much so. Somebody was working in in the other. Of above plane. <laughs> uh huh. So you read cards. You do some other types of energy work and things like that. And we'll get into some more of that kind of stuff because I do want to talk about that a little bit more. But I want to know more about you. <laughs> First, let's go with just how did you come up with Lady Luna? What is it about that that? Okay, that goes back in the day. My parents always told me that when I was little, I have colic, but usually was under the time of the full moon. Let's start. I'm original from Guatemala, and we used to live in a farm. So my mother used to put me out, you know, holding my stomach and take me out in the patio so I can see the moon. She didn't know why, but that was the point that I stopped crying. That's when you were a baby. Yeah, that was like, oh, my gosh, really a baby, no? And I remember my father used to come with my mother, and then one of the workers used to bring a frog. <laughs> so put the frog in front of me, and I start laughing. This is That was the story. So in the middle of 2000, I met this lady. It's a, her, she goes by Lady of the Lake. Uh-huh. And I met her in Ogden. 
And I told the story. We started talking, and she used to play music, and we went to a bar. So the first time I went to see her with another friend, and she's promoting this and that and that, and then say, we have Lady Luna here doing readings. And suddenly I see the light on me, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's me? You know what I mean? So this is how Barely Start. But I always having had huge connection with the moon yeah. in different phases, everything. And it's not just that I celebrate the phases, but I know that I merge with that. Mm -hmm. So the energy is very intertwined with mine. That's cool. I'm like, for me, I'm very much connected with the moon as well. And for people that think, you know, I'm, there's people that are going to be listening that totally understand what that means. And then there's going to be people, what the hell are they talking about? They're connected to the moon, but Google it. Anyways, yeah. um, I've always had that connection with the moon as well. And, you know, I follow the cycles of it. I can see the influence of it in my life and the different phases that it goes through and things like that. So you that was back in 2000. Yeah, middle of 2000. Actually, after my divorce, everything started coming out. Yeah. Even that I was, I grew up in an environment that is, uh, no, you don't do that, uh -huh. but you can do it in private. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Latin American people, we are very superstitious. So I have my father's side being superstitious and my mother's side that we used to have di dinner and after dinner, her and I, we always stay in the living room without any reason and some noise or something. And she used to say, oh, so-and-so is dying. He just came to say goodbye, you know? And in the beginning, I was like, okay. Growing more, I was like going to open the door to see what happened, you know? Yeah. But the next day, you always have the news, so-and-so die. And she just smiled. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's coming straight from her side. Uh-huh. You think that's kind of where your connection is strongest and where that, yeah. where your gifts or your abilities came from? Besides that I was born with that, mm -hmm. it's also the genetic part coming from my mother's side. Do you remember growing up your mom doing things? Did no, she, actually, no? no. She was more into when she see people, used to see people. She passed away already. Was more, oh, this person is has this suffering or whatever. You know uh -huh. what I mean? She never told the person. But I knew when she talked to me, I'm the youngest one, she used to say that, oh, so-and-so is going to a certain trouble in their lives or whatever. Mm -hmm. And was more, she was very religious. She was very Catholic. And I think her faith helped her with the other things. Yeah. So she never said, don't do that. I used to go to do re someone to read my cards or something. She was curious, but... This is only between you and I, you know what I mean? That <laughs> yeah. type of thing. So you said you were born in Guatemala. Correct. When, when did you come to America? In 1990. In I did the, the millennium thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I moved here because I was married to a Utah person. So. And was that a huge <laughs> shift, I'm sure? Yes, because... Uh, how I can put that? I've been so spoiled in my family, and suddenly I have to do things. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I have to be a wife. And the snow was a huge thing. Then we moved to Florida, and then we came back. But during the marriage, I remember if I say, oh, I have a dream, he used to say, what was the dream, blah, blah, blah. And we used to go to see his mother. And the mother didn't ask him too many questions about that, you know? <laughs> and then it's like... Uh, if they have a dream, they just to call me, say, what do you think about this? So I think that at that time, they saw something that I didn't see in me. Mm -hmm. Was until we got divorced. And there is a store in Salt Lake, the Jewel Maidens, and close over there is the, how you call that? The Boy Scout store. Oh, yeah. So my son, we were buying something for his derby. And he runs away, and he comes back and says, Mommy, Mommy, there is a store over there. They have rocks. You will love it. <laughs> so we went to see the store, and I was like a child in the candy store, okay? <laughs> I was like, wow. So basically, this is where, at this level, conscience level, I have the, the connection. The connection. They too. start having classes. And I always like cards, mm -hmm. you know? I don't know. I, I'm fascinated with them. 
and they have a class about tarot. So, okay, why not take a class, no? And when I took it, I was like, I don't feel what they said about this car means, you know? And I was like a struggle for book oriented and my intuition. Yeah. But the person, the teacher, I remember she was really nice and said, you know what? This is like a general scene. You do what your intuition, what your guys tells you to do. Yeah. So this is when I say, okay, it's not set in the stone. Mm -hmm. I've talked to a lot of people and I think everybody learns something. Everybody learns a modality. Everybody learns whether it's card reading or palm reading or, you know, Reiki. It doesn't matter what they're learning when it comes to their modality. But I think in the end, we just make it our own and we take those bits and pieces. And so, like you said, you didn't connect with the way that it was supposed to be done. Correct. But you still do it and you do it wonderfully. Yeah. Yeah. The same with Reiki, because I, I have the second degree. Mm -hmm. By choice, I didn't want to do the third. So when I do the healing using Reiki, I mix everything. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, it's For me, it's hard to define. People want a definition. What do you do? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So sometimes it's like when you go to a place, I want a combo, right? Uh -huh. So that's what it is. So you do a combo. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk more about um, what it was like being raised in Guatemala and then the culture difference coming to America. Obviously, it's going to be significant. Did you speak English when you came? Yes. Okay. Yes. I went to a private school, and over there, you take English like you take math. Uh -huh. It's not an option. And also, I used to tell my mother that I'm never going to be there. It's like I went to marry someone from Europe or United States. And my mother say, okay, you know, whatever works for you. Yeah. And I, I was born there, but I never feel part of that. Really? I feel part of my family perfectly, but the traditions, the customs, the everyday thing, I was uh, very disconnected. Mm -hmm. Because I was thinking, this is not fair. This is no good. Why people is doing this? Why you have to live for appearance? What, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I know I portray that I like all that, but I like to see deep inside. Mm -hmm. And so I never connect. And I remember one time there is a town outside the city, like 45 minutes away. It's a colonial style. And there was a, a woman, they called the witch, La Bruja. <laughs> la Let's bruja. go to see La Bruja, no? The, let's go to see the witch. And my friend and I, we went. And she to, she used to live in the, kind of in the mountain. But you have to go up, like, I don't know. That was like 15 minutes going up stairs. Uh -huh. And we went over there, and she said, you have the gift. She told and, you that? Yeah, and you have to use it. And you don't need to come to see me. So... She told me that I will marry an Anglo, and she described, and that was my husband. And then we tried to go to see her again, and she disappeared. <laughs> I know, I know. She was from Spain. I remember her. I remember her features. Uh -huh. And going to that town is like people go here to Park City, so I was always expect to see her in some place. She disappeared. That's really interesting. So when I met my husband, I met him in Guatemala. I remember, I no, I didn't remember. I didn't pay attention until we got married. We moved to Florida. My friend came to Florida, and she said, do you remember? I said, do I remember what? You know what I mean? Do you remember La Bruja? She told you this, this, and that, and look where you are. And I was like, boom, you know? How old were you when you went and saw when, her? I, oh my gosh, I was like 20, 19, 20 yeah. years old. And I married him when I was 28, you know? And, but also in between, I was dating this guy who was into the cars and let's go to see this bruja. And we used to go and everything. That was fun. But I seen that was the way it like start stirring the pot. Uh -huh. You know, I hear people say, oh, I have this vision, this, 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 and that. I didn't. Mine was kind of smooth uh -huh. until one day it's like, a, oh, my gosh. You know, people saw it before I did. Yeah. So did you 
kind of really start doing stuff in 2000 or did you kind of I I got divorced in 2001 so 2002 and that's when you started to kind of yeah. really embrace it and yeah. start doing stuff and I remember I was in the living room listening delirium uh-huh. okay so I was just moving and dancing and suddenly things start feeling different inside of me but feeling good Instead to see, oh, what is this weird feeling? It was like, oh, it's smooth and everything. And this is when I started the classes and everything. I started hanging with people with a, a like mentality. Yeah. We start saying, oh, let's read cards to each other. <laughs> you know? And, and I used to be more practitioner in rituals and everything uh, in a solitary way. So then my mother passed away in 2011. And then... I was working in another place as a part-time. And I remember I was working nights and I sat over there. And I was like, uh, what am I doing here? <laughs> so that night I write my resignation. After a week, it's like, I don't have anything to do at night. I mean, it's too much time in my hands, no? And that was like when Crohn's Hollow opened. Uh-huh. So I went and I said, okay, I need a job <laughs> and I can do readings. And they look at me and say, sure. When you can start, you tell me. <laughs> Just like that. And I remember I started that Sunday. Really? So I was like, oh, my gosh, I, I belong to a place where I can, I can work as a reader, no? The first person across the table, I was like, I kind of froze because, you know, it's a stranger. But that was really good. My, my legs were shaking and everything. Yeah. So mainly I was one of the first readers there. For Crone Solo? Yeah. Well, that's cool. So this is how I start put my name out. Uh-huh. Do you still work there? Do you still no, read there? No, Then things change, and I have the opportunity to work where I work part-time. Mm-hmm. And I think that was time. You know what I mean? I think it was the, the moment I say, okay, this is your thing. You can do it in front of people. We boost your, <laughs> your confi- uh, confidence, and there you go. You know, it's time to move on. Yeah. Where do you do you read anywhere now specifically, or do you do it out Bes- of your home? Besides or? of the fair and events, I do it from home, mm-hmm. and also I do parties. So I go to the houses of people, and you know they are so cute because they have like when you have a family reunion. So this one, they put a group of people that they want readings. They go, they have their party, they come to the room wherever I am, and that's it. How is that? Is that a fun thing to do? I love it. Do you? I love it. I love it. That would be cool. Yeah, it it is. I have one experience with this lady. Usually, you know, they give you a table. You are in a room. Mm-hmm. But that was that happened this year was for Valentine's. <laughs> so when I went to the room, she decorated everything in Valentine colors, in flowers, and everything, rose petals all over. So I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. And I always meet beautiful people. Yeah. People that they know <clears throat> why they are there. Mm-hmm. Not just because I'm your friend, I'm here, whatever. You know what I mean? It's more, they merge with that. Yeah. And I don't do it based on time. It's more like I can finish. When you work to a place, you have time set. Uh-huh. But sometimes you have to kind of crunch it. So the people get the information. Yeah. But when you are in that setting, you you have more time and you can basically give a deeper reading. Yeah, that's one of the things I don't like about the fairs, all those <clears throat> events and things that we do. That's one of the things that kind of drives me nuts is that, I mean, you kind of have to do it this way where it's a 20-minute session or a 30-minute session so that you, you know, can not just maximize, but also the people that are sitting before you obviously want to do other things. And so... But I always hate that 20-minute session because you can never really get to get to the stuff that you need to get to. And like you said, you have to crunch it in there so that you at least get some of that information. And so I always think of it as just that little taste, that little seed that yeah, can be planted. Yeah, like a wine taster. You know, uh-huh. you want to say, oh, I want this bottle, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, but that's a frustrating aspect. I mean, we got to come up with some other some other way to do a fair where people can sit in front of you for at least an hour. But. That's going to be a long fair. <laughs> yeah, but you, sometimes with that, you have to play by ear. Mm-hmm. Because even when I do the readings in a party, uh, some people, they just have one question, or oh, that's enough. Yeah. And some people extend. 
but it's it, basically you manage more your time in that way. Yeah. So. Tell me about your, I know I've met your daughter before. How many kids do you have? I have two. My two. son, he's 25, and my daughter is 19. He is 19. Yeah. And are they, what do they think about what it is that you do? Oh, this is very interesting. <laughs> okay. They have the gift uh -huh. in different ways. When they were little, they were more open to that. Um, I never pressure you have to do what I do. So I never pressured that. So I let him be, you know, whatever is your, your heart calling, go ahead for do it. Yeah. My son is more on the side that I don't believe. <laughs> but you know what, mom? Here is a Buddhist book. Oh, I was reading about this, no? Victoria is, my daughter is more in the side that, no, that's not true, but... I'm aware of that. Uh -huh. They never criticize, they respect, but I think it has to be in the way I raised them. Yeah. That was like, okay, this is a weird example. I don't like snakes. <laughs> My son, on the other hand, and Victoria, they love snakes. So I used to take them to the zoo and I was waiting at the door. Mm -hmm. And I was just speaking to see that they are okay. And they say, why you don't come in? And I say, you know, I really don't like it. Well, we don't go. I say, no, 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 no. You go because you like it. I respect and I want respect of this side. So all the time has been based on that. So they don't criticize. They don't celebrate either. But when it's something related, they are over there. Yeah. So I have the different kind of support. Do you think at some point in their life, though, because I... I think I've got four kids and I think, you know, they tease me and make fun of me and they're all kind of younger. My oldest is 17 and, but they, it's funny cause they're all super connected. They, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of don't realize it or don't want to, I don't know. I think that's part of growing up and things like that. But do you think your kids at some point will get there to where not just become believers, but kind of start incorporating some of the things into their life? And what I see so far, they incorporate without knowing. Uh-huh. So that's okay. Yeah. It, it, I let them go on their own page. So they will be see, okay, okay, this works for me. I use it. It doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. So I think growing up for them was with the divorce and everything. They are learning to find their own way. Yeah. And I'm a different kind of parent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there for them. I, I make my opinion, but. You make your decision because it's your life. Yeah. And I know, going back to your question, yes, they will. Even though they are point. in the 50s or 70s, you know what I mean? But they will. Yeah. I think a lot of people kind of do that where they incorporate. And what I'm talking about when it comes to incorporating things, it's things like um, it's not that they have to become crazy hippies and start reading cards or anything like that. But mindfulness and meditation, even though they might not call it meditation right. or some connection or resonation with stones or crystals or something like that. And, you know, and a, a connection to the earth and to nature and all those kind of things. I think people just in general naturally have some of those things in their life. I think the, the part that makes the difference is when you bring awareness to it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then they start to see that connection and the realization of, oh, this is why I'm doing this. Or when I do this, I actually feel better. I don't know. That's just my belief. Me too. And also is the way that you connect with yourself. Yeah. So you start, I, people say you start with you, but as a humans, we need to go outside first. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, a, oh, so I, in my experience is looking around. And then I can focus on me. Yeah. And then turns the opposite. <laughs> you know, when you have that training, that whatever you look is, oh, feels good. Now I practice on me and then I'm ready to give. Yeah. So. What do you do to practice on yourself? What do you do to kind of feed your own soul? Um, I meditate. Mm -hmm. I go for walks. Oh, I just sit in the backyard next to the tree. <laughs> you know, I am a very social person, but I love when I'm alone. Uh -huh. So my meditation, I don't exercise that much, but uh, it's more in the spiritual way, reading. As I do crafts. So when I do crafts, all my, my pieces are made on 
meditation. So I'm relaxing, but I'm producing something. Yeah. So I don't do yoga. You don't I do just, yoga. I just just breathe. I mean, <laughs> just the fact to breathe. When my mother died, I was talking with her doctor. Uh-huh. And he said to me, this is normal. You have to grieve, blah, blah, blah. You know, the whole scene. And then he said, how often do you meditate? And I say, well, at that time, that was like 15 minutes a day or something. The doctor asked you that? Yeah. No, that was a special doctor. Yeah. Very, yeah. And then he said to me, you know what? You don't meditate 15 minutes. Your life is a meditation. Mm. Everything that you do is a meditation. And he gave me the talk about mindfulness and all this stuff. So I remember flying back to Utah. I was thinking about it. And this is like, okay, everything I do is my pray. Everything I do is my meditation. Yeah. So for me, it's hard when your question, what do you do? Well, I leave, no? <laughs> so <laughs> because just, I just incorporate. Kind of how I move yeah. through life. Uh -huh. That's beautiful. So it's, you do what with your intent. Mm -hmm. Yes, sometimes you need a special time that you take 10, 15 minutes to do more deeper or whatever. But it's in every single step you are doing something yeah. that helps with your connection with the higher self, with the universe, and the connection with whoever is around you. Yeah. That's okay. You can bump the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm talking, right? This is something I want to talk to you about. Being it that you come from Guatemala, you have perceptions about, you said it earlier, like when they superstitious yeah superstitious so coming from that kind of environment that kind of energy in a sense where do you find like how has that changed for you where because i understand the superstition involved in regards to kind of accessing energy and working with energy and like you said the bruja right the the witch that mm -hmm. lives up on the mountain and who knows what she's doing and how have you kind of worked with that and changed because you're not superstitious for right no no Actually, I'm not, but I'm aware. Uh -huh. So if you go deeper in superstition, is I think it's a word that people use to don't say I'm aware. Mm -hmm. So nowadays, people is more often of awareness, wildness. Back in the 60s, 70s, those words were like, oh, my God, you must be in drugs. You know, that yeah. was associated with that. How that changed? I think that you maybe want to know how that changed me being a Latino woman with certain gifts that didn't know moved to another culture. Yeah. So basically, I feel well. And it was funny that I came to Utah when I'm a minority first mm -hmm. with, uh, for race, for gender, and for belief. Yeah. Right? But I always said, you know what? My parents raised me that you see people for what they are. Mm -hmm. So I say, well, if you believe in whatever is your belief religion-wise, good. I respect, I listen, I learn, but don't change me. My ex-husband was different religion, <laughs> and we agree in that. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that was maybe hard to fit because you live in society, you have to fit. I will not be a hermit, no? Yeah. But it wasn't that hard like I see other people have hard time. If somebody practice a religion, good. I can go, I can participate, I respect, but that's it. I've been very clear all my time to put the line, the boundary. Yeah. We can share, but if I want something, if I want to change, it's because I want it, not because you are telling me. Yeah. So given that respect... I've been receiving respect. And if I don't receive, well, I turn Have to the day. other side. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not, I will not take it personal. I will not make like a big deal. Mm -hmm. So that for me has been, been so hard. Just kind of come naturally to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about, I want to get like into a really deep conversation about energy and the universe. Okay? Mm -hmm. I want to know what you think when it comes to, because I have my beliefs, I have my own kind of ideas. Mm -hmm. Tell me what your idea or your belief is around. First off, if you, I'm assuming you were kind of raised Catholic. Correct. Are you, do you kind of still consider yourself Catholic? Do you go to church? No, no, no. no. 
And so do you find your faith or your belief resonating with God or in something different? I believe in the universe okay. in general. In general, whatever is part of the universe could be God, could be the stars, could be the tree. Mm -hmm. But it's like I see it like a big umbrella. Uh -huh. And they might have little things in there. Could be God, could be the goddess. And But the connection, I like to do it to the soul. To the soul? <laughs> to the soul. Straight. Okay, I believe in God, uh -huh. but I'd rather go to the universe, to the above. Oh, yeah. If Straight I need you, I, I, I can have the intermediate uh -huh. for some help, but I like to aim to whatever is the, the main point yeah. that is coming from. I agree. I agree. That's kind of the way I look at it. I look at this, you know, the universe and we're all stemming from that universe mm -hmm. and the same source of energy, whether, whether it's God, whether it's a tree, whether it's you and me, whether it's the table that we're sitting in front of. Right. That's just where everything comes from. Um, I want to talk as well, too, because I want to ask you if you've been doing this stuff for, I don't know, 10, 15 years. Right. Out, of, out of the closet, yes. yes. <laughs> In the closet, <laughs> longer. Longer than that. How have you seen not just the community, but like energy work in general and kind of the way that it's changed and uh, evolved? Do you know what I mean? Because it mm -hmm. has, I think obviously it comes along with a lot of kind of stereotypes and it's something that people feel, even now today, it's difficult to kind of admit to and talk about with people that you, do you know what I mean? How have you seen that changed over the years? I see him for good, but also I've been seeing a lot of people to use that as a mask mm -hmm. to be accepted or to be part of whatever is of. It has been changing and a lot, and I've been seeing something after 2012. Mm -hmm. I've been seeing a lot that people is more, okay, we belong to this community, but I belong to my own community. When I say my own, is myself. Yeah. So I've been seeing more people working themselves mm -hmm. and share. And it's more, um, it's coming more pure. And I see more in the children. Yeah. I mean, oh my gosh, those little babies, mm -hmm. they come already with the things that we have to go through, learn. Yeah. They come natural with that. Yeah. My wife and I were talking about that the other day, actually. It seems like kids these days and... Uh, I mean, everyone that you see when they're younger, it just seems like they're already functioning at a frequency mm -hmm. that, you know, they already get a whole bunch of stuff there and they just do it naturally and they understand they have that connection already. Or, or as opposed to people that are adults and, you know, and the, the other generation, it's like they had to do a lot of work to get to that point. Correct. <laughs> and kids are just like, yeah, this is what it is. The other thing is like it's, there is a lot of uh, commercialize mm -hmm. about that. So mm -hmm. you need to do this. You need to do that. So the people, I believe everybody born with the gift. Yeah. So do I. It's your choice if you want to pursue it or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you want to belong to this group of people for any reason, convenience or whatever you want to call, people start doing that. And sometimes the people who teach, I'm not saying everybody, but some of them, they don't, they are not ready. They are doing for the ego point of view not of the soul point of view. Yeah. So this is the other downside with that. But then you have on the other side, the people that they are pure energy, a mm -hmm. uh, pure belief, and that's what makes the balance. But I think it's needed both. Yeah. So. I agree. Um, have you seen, so you mentioned 2012. Do you think there were, because I've read a lot of stuff and I've studied a lot of stuff and I, I like going out there and getting kind of different points of view and different mm -hmm. perspectives. Do you think there was a big, huge energy shift right around that yes. time period? Yes. Did you feel it? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But I, mainly when was the 2012 prophecy coming from Guatemala and have the Mayans there, uh -huh. I knew, and don't ask me how, but I knew, <laughs> That wasn't that the earthquake, that these, all these things around was more my internal earthquake, uh -huh. my internal scene learning, moving from this bale to the other bale. And I felt, and literally, I felt passing through the bales. Really? That, that was something that I was like uh, mesmerized because <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling it and seeing it. Yeah. So it was completely different. 
if you put now the the air changes and everything actually was before mm -hmm. before 2012 you see all those changes that happened the disasters ecological or the bombs or whatever it was that was like i think for me and i took it in this way was to make me aware of the outside and what i can do not to prevent but what i can do to move into that yeah that's really interesting. So, yeah. I think that's a good way to look at it. So, like you said, you you know, 2012 came around, and you knew it wasn't going to be the end of the world. Mm, yeah. But I like the way you described it, where it was that kind of internal um, earthquake, earthquake yeah. that internal change that was going to be a big, huge shift and everything. Yeah. I wasn't awake in 2012. Do you know what I mean? I hadn't come to spirituality mm -hmm. or my belief system that I have in place now, but looking back, and kind of real analyzing it and things like that, I can see that uh, I think since that point, and granted it's not mm -hmm. that that's the only point, but I think since that point, a lot of people have gone through big, big, huge changes in right. their life and big shifts. Mm -hmm. And it seems like more and more people are kind of not necessarily waking up. I hate that term too. I hate when we talk in the realm of spirituality and all these little terms and things that people use, it just drives me nuts. But <laughs> I think that... Just to make things easier, I think a lot more people are waking up mm -hmm. and becoming open and looking and searching and wanting to find answers. Right. Do you see like a completely different kind of client now, where as before it was this kind of typical type of person and now it's kind of a bigger, broader spectrum of people? Or You know, the people that I encountered at that time, a lot of them, the majority of them, they are still in the same place. I don't know, it's because I made the choice to move forward. Yeah. And when you move forward, you encounter different people. And that moving forward make me see and be kind of pick and choose who I want in around me, mm -hmm. you know? And I see the people right now is, if you put it, the people who comes from my readings, they are always want to learn more. Yeah. And I have a lot of people mm -hmm. that is like, I feel sometimes like a teacher, <laughs> you know, because what I can do for this is no, basically what is the reading my life. And then it's like, you know, I have this feeling, I feel this like a gift or I see things or whatever. And sometimes I say, you know what, you see this, it's okay. So can you tell me what I can do? And I have a lot of email communication suggesting readings, uh, books, uh, materials, or things to do. Uh -huh. So it's more um, more awakening. Yeah, people just searching. Or more and aware. Because mm -hmm. I believe that sometimes we put into sleep. That's I, I'm very metaphoric person <laughs> when I talk. And I say, your gift is sleeping, giving more coffee. You know what I mean? You know, it, it, it's, it's that. Yeah. It's not, oh, I lose it. You never lose it. Yeah, it's just asleep. You just put it asleep but on the side because right now it's not working for me. Uh-huh. Because when you force it to work in, it doesn't work. Have you ever fo forced it before in your life? Uh, no. No? No. You, you know, I just let it be. You never when put it's it the to time, sleep. no. <laughs> if it's there, it's sleeping needs to rest. I got to sleep eight hours, right? Because I need to rest. Yeah. So I believe that when I need it, it's coming back. Yeah. So. I like that way. I like that way of looking at it. <laughs> yeah. It just needs to take a nap. Yeah. It'll it, wake up. Yeah, it's coming because why I'm going to force. Mm -hmm. So what happened when I'm now standing now in my spirituality? Yeah. When I was 15. Maybe I wasn't in the set of level or mind or whatever to comprehend and apply that. Yeah. So I believe, like Christians say, God give you what you can handle and when you can handle. Mm -hmm. So this is what I say. Okay, it's not time. Just wait. Just It'll wait. Come. Yeah, and in the meantime, you you learn something different. And believe it or not, that learning connect you with the one who's sleeping. And there you go. Yeah. 
do you, I find this too, that, I mean, undoubtedly, it doesn't matter who I read for, who I sit before, even just who I meet in general in life, Mm -hmm. where, you know, initially it may be that type of relationship where you're trying to offer them something or you're providing them something because they came to you for a reading or a session Mm -hmm. or something like that. But I always take away from it. I always have bits and pieces of it that I can bring back into my own life that, do you know what I mean? Really resonate and connect with me. Do you find that same thing when you work with the people? exchange yeah. of of learning? Yes, yeah. you always learn something from whoever, mm-hmm. even that is next to you without talking. There is something. It's an exchange. Is um, I think it's part of the spiritual business, <laughs> you know. And it's not like uh, I invest in you and I'm and you invest in me. It's natural. It's it's coming from there. That's just that law of exchange. Mm-hmm. Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I had a question I was going to ask you. It just left my head. It'll come back to me. Right. It just went to sleep. We'll just give it some more <laughs> coffee. We'll just wait for it to come back. Um, what else do you like to do outside of energy work, outside of healing or card reading? or My hobbies? Yeah. Tell us about Lady Luna a little bit. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Uh... Oh my gosh, here we are talking about it. You put me in chase mate. <laughs> mm. I like to listen to music. Mm-hmm. I like to dance alone. And now I have a dog, so I, I dance with the dog. <laughs> um, I like to open holes in the jar and play with the soil. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those things. I like to drive without destination. Just go out. Just go. Like I, here we go. Yeah. You know, I have to go to work after this. No, but if not, I will keep going. <laughs> you know, um, I'm not a planner. Um, I like quietness. Even that, I I think it's because I work talking all the time. Uh-huh. So the the silence moment is a treasure for me. Mm-hmm. Um. I like to mix herbs and do my own teas. <laughs> um, what else? I do crafts. I always go to the uh, trading post, the Native American, and so like, and I learn how to do beading. Uh huh. Making different stuff. Did you make yeah. your necklaces that you're wearing? No, not this one. Okay. I, I haven't bring anything with me that I made. <laughs> so I'm learning those details. I go to. Uh, painting class I'm learning acrylic yeah <laughs> and it's so fun because I have to learn the techniques and I was telling the teacher say you know what I don't like to copy is that okay <laughs> if whatever is in my head and I've been painting whatever is coming to my head is it like a paint night thing where you go and no you... no no I go to this school every Saturday uh-huh. and it's a bunch of people there and you Put your canvas, and some people bring pictures. And she taught me to do from from the real thing, Uh no pencil. But when it's to paint something, I say, this is my idea. And she said, just put it. Yeah. Do you like doing that? Yes, because give me more freedom for my thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, I started painting last year, and I, you know, I'm not an artist by any means, and I, I'm like everybody else probably. I've, you know, doodled and all that kind of stuff throughout my life, but I started painting last year because I just like that outlet. I like to just put paint to canvas, even though I have no idea what I'm doing mm-hmm. or how to do it, but I just like the creation process of it. Exactly. And, you know, back in the day, I used to teach classes uh, it's not a Mandela, but I used to have this modality to play some music, mm-hmm. just instrumental, have a basket with a bunch of pencil colors, and everybody has their own page. Mm-hmm. We do breathing exercises before, and then <clears throat> with the eyes closed, you pick a pencil or whatever you want to, you know, you feel it there, yeah. and with your eyes closed, you start painting on the paper. Hmm. So that was mainly, and the, to analyze that was mainly to see what is inside of you. Yeah. Because sometimes we humans don't want to say things by word because, oh my gosh, what you're going to say or something. But when you write, when you paint, you put all your senses, your constant conscience and subconscious there. So things start flowing. Yeah. 
So the, the, the thing is I used to ask them and say, okay, tell me what do you see there? And then the other person makes the observation. So everybody's analyzing. Uh-huh. And at the end, I say, well, this is what I see. You know, and it is like, oh, okay. And with the process, you can see people start evolve and start seeing things and fixing things that they didn't know that was there. That sounds like a really good class. It, it, it was, you yeah. You don't do that anymore? You know what? I, I think I started having the the little bug moving me to classes. Yeah. Feel drawn back to them again. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll look forward to it. Yeah, I want to do that. And that I have to, I don't know, think a little bit deeper. But uh, I'm going to do about pendulum classes. Mm -hmm. So, But well, not just like you use the pendulum. Yes, I know. And here it is going, no? Usually that class I teach the history, like in the regular history, and then how you apply in the metaphysic field. Yeah. And then the, how you use it, how you make it your the pendulum. And then you, I move to the regular questions, the mundane questions, and then into the healing area. So somebody that doesn't understand what a pendulum is, or I mean, that word itself, obviously, people are familiar with, but tell us about how do, how do you use a pendulum in energy work? Or what is the point of that? Me, how I do use it. Yeah, okay. just you. So Basically, I when a person sits in front of me, if they have a yes or no question, that there is no margin to say an explanation, uh -huh. I use it there. And the other part I use it is when I do Reiki or any clearings, a chakra clearing or whatever, just to remove and bring the positive, remove the obstacles or the blockage. Mm -hmm. But I've been discovered something. I asked the question, even that is a yes or no question, and comes with an explanation. Does it? Yeah. So <laughs> let's say no, and your options are here and here. Yeah. But if you, if the person look at me and say the question, I cannot say the yes or no. I can see what is coming and other venues. But when I have the pendulum, is it's immediately yes and blah, 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 you know? Yeah. So uh, that's the way that I use it. Do you use it a lot for yourself in your own life? Yes. I, I, I use it a lot when I do, when I feel something is not right. And I'm not talking about my chakra is unbalanced. Mm -hmm. Like if I have a pain in my knee, that's very common. <laughs> so, you know, I use it there to remove, to move the energy around. Yeah. I use it when I clear my house. So I use this motion, I use everything else, but I use the pendulum and the symbols to go, to clear. To clear your house. Yeah. We use pendulums every now and then. My wife actually, when we got married, we used our we used a pendulum to decide where we were gonna go on our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. We just got in the car without a destination, without any direction that we were going to go, and we just used the pendulum to pick which way we headed. And, of course, we went to the most beautiful places and mm -hmm. had the most wonderful experience, but that was cool. That was a lot of fun. That is something that I, you know, I will <clears throat> not be lucky to say. Like, if I miss something in the house, to use the pen pendulum to see where it's at. Like, if you misplace something? Yeah, misplaced, and I never have an answer for that. <laughs> You can't find it. No, and it is like, a, is this in this room? And doesn't move. And I moved to all the rooms and nothing. Yeah. But one time somebody asked me to clear the house and was in another state. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know the house. And I just asked, do you have here, you know, the position, the bedroom, bathroom, everything. And this person said, yeah, is not that way my house? Have you been here? Say no. <laughs> so I basically draw it in a piece of paper uh -huh. and that worked for them. Oh, really? Yeah. So I think my pendulum use is not much for me. It's more for you or whoever is yeah, you. Yeah, for the other person. Mm -hmm. What about cards? Do you read your own cards? Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I do, but basically it's more what is for me today. Uh -huh. And meditate for that card. When I have that crossroads, because I'm human. Yeah. So, of course, I'm going to want to, to have the sweet talk. You know what I mean? 
but also I know that it's not that. Mm -hmm. So when I have that question mark, I call someone. And I say, okay, I need help in this. And there we go. Yeah. Who do you go get work done from? Oh, it's a, it's a woman who lives in, in West Jordan. Uh-huh. And she's really good. She doesn't do the car. She's she's a priestess. Mm -hmm. um, Santera, voodoo priestess. <laughs> and I can I have that connection there. Oh, cool. Do you? Because I think a lot of times people who do energy work and who are in the field don't go get work done. Don't. I mean, it's almost like we get too, not distracted or wrapped up, but for whatever reason, we're kind of hesitant sometimes to go get work done on ourselves. You know, personal, I have to feel very comfortable with the person who's going to work on me. Yeah. So what I do usually is when we talk, you know, when you talk with people, I have a sense. Mm -hmm. No, because you just got this degree, sure, I will go. You know, it's not like I go to a restaurant. Yeah. You know, it's a new restaurant, wow, and then it's, I don't like the food because, <laughs> well, it's my body, it's my energy. Mm -hmm. So I have to be careful who I allow to be there. Yeah, I think that's a good kind of rule of thumb for anybody mm -hmm. who's going to seek out energy work. Do you know what I mean? Like you said, it's not about the degree or the certificate or what class mm -hmm. they've taken or who they've studied under or they've traveled to India and mm -hmm. da, 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 all those different things that people and it is just who you resonate and connect with. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, I don't know, it's my body. Yeah. It's my energy. It's, I pamper it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I don't want, it's, I don't want to take something that doesn't belong to me and I don't want to give something or somebody takes something, basically. Yeah. Well, tell me about your vacation recently. Do you want to talk about your vacation? <laughs> they, uh, they went to Albuquerque. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to know? Well, I saw a bunch of pictures and stuff on yeah. Facebook, and we chatted just a little bit about it when we were up in Ogden mm -hmm. the other day. But tell me some, like, what was the purpose of that vacation? Um, I'm not Native American, but I think one of my cells is there. <laughs> Yeah, you got a past life where you were Native American. You know, I just have one dream when in 2000, I remember, mm -hmm. that was related to that. But I let it be there, you know, until I met someone, and he's an artist. I don't know what is the connection. It's, if it's love, it must be love in another level. It's not a romantic thing. Yeah. But when I start talking with him, that vision start coming to me and I remember and I talking to a stranger and I say you know what and I just told it and then he says something that he remember me that we met in a past life in the dream he told you no this? This, no we oh, are talking oh, okay. now no and that was like a, oh my gosh I have my belief and he has the belief and here we are no uh-huh and I always like the Native American culture. I'm not very nice to know if it's Lakota, if it's this or is that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Learning is learning for me. And respect whatever is the, the tribe. So there is the gathering of the nations that they do every year in Albuquerque. So I want to go. Had and I want to see him. No, that's my first time. Yeah. So this is my <laughs> third time that I go to New Mexico driving mm -hmm. and I always have a pleasant trip but it, some people came with me <laughs> and you know the saying that they said they life give you lemons you make lemonade uh -huh. oh I make the best lemonade in my <laughs> life <laughs> because that wasn't easy the way over there really to making sure I came back alone <laughs> and I just put the thing you know what I mean but that's not what happened in there is um, the connection. I love drums. Mm -hmm. And I was on the top, and I brought a lot of people uh, under me was from uh, Oklahoma. So then they have these dancers, the girls dancers from West Valley, Utah. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> you know. And all the people, the elders, that they were like, look at me like a, and I say, yes, it's Utah. You know, <laughs> I was very proud. Yeah. And later I met the person, the people who was doing the drumming there. They, they were very famous. I met it here in Utah. Really? 
uh, and I was walking all over and there was a point that I need to charge my phone. So I'm sitting on the floor in the because it, that was indoors, listen to the music and everything was going on. And I was charging my phone, sitting on the floor. This is what I mean. I'm sitting on the floor. Came an older man, I mean elder, with food in his hand. And he leaned on me and said, and, and touched my shoulder, my left shoulder. I remember. <laughs> I, I, I just feel it, no? And he said, you look so beautiful with the colors. And he's like, the colors? You know what I mean? Yeah. And he said, you are doing good. You know what you are doing is the right thing. Mm -hmm. And you look so beautiful. And he pat my shoulder and walk away. That was a moment, right? And I stand up, tried to look at the man, and I didn't see it. He was gone. He was gone. <sighs> I, I have those things a lot in my life. Do you? Yeah. I was in Europe in the 80s. And I was in a training in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. And we, my family has a cargo agency, so we import, import. And we were looking. I went to visit one of the clients that he's supposed to pick me up in Brussels. But they were living in Ghent. It's another town. So when I get off of the train, this uh, I went to a, a little bar. And I have a Stella, but that is better that you have a Stella than a glass of water, no? And this man is looking at me and he start talking to me. In my country, you don't talk to strangers, especially in Europe, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's okay. And we start talking and he say, what are you doing? And I explain. And he say, come, come with me. We are going to call this person. The guy grabbed my bag. We went to the place. He talked with the person. He took me to the train. He wrote his address because he was into soccer. Okay? And say, when you are in your country, you send a postcard, whatever. Uh -huh. Go in the train, meet the person and his family. We went for dinner and we start talking. Turns to be that the place I was, that was already demolished. There was now an empty parking lot, no building. <laughs> And I say, look, I have the address. And I'm looking page by page in my notebook and nothing. Wow. He took care of me. And they were looking at me, this this family, like, just leave it there. You know <laughs> what I mean? So that happened in Albuquerque as well. Uh -huh. And I met a lot of people from the vendors. But instead to talk about just for the piece that you are buying, mm -hmm. that was talking about beyond the piece. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, I still communicate with them. It's, it, it's different, the, the energy there. In, in Albuquerque? Yeah. And I saw my friend. <laughs> yeah. Had you ever meet, met him before in person? Uh, this is the second time we see each other face to face. Yeah. We talk, we on the phone, we write everything. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. It's cool. It's cool. That's neat that you kind of have those experiences where out of the blue, some elder or somebody, or I mean, because mm -hmm. uh, it made me think about that your story when you were, you know, went and saw the Bruja back in the day. And then next, you know, she's gone. You can't find her. But she her. was real because my friends saw it. I was <laughs> like, Diana, do you remember, right? Yeah. Yeah. And have you ever tried to like dissect that and understand that more? Or are you just like, you know what? That is what it is. I'm okay with that. I understand that is uh, some people believe in angels. Uh -huh. So maybe it's one of those that they came to visit me because sometimes I'm so caught up into the mundane. Mm-hmm. That is like, okay, you need to see the flesh and blood. Here you are. You know what I mean? And yeah. then poof it out. Yeah. But also I have that communication in my own privacy. Do you? Yeah. Like I talk with my parents, both, both are deceased, and I talk every morning. That, I tell people that all the time because, yeah. you know, people will come to us a lot where they're struggling with death and they're struggling with losing a loved one. And I'm told, I tell people that all the time where... You know, you're driving in the car, you're doing something, and what will happen is you'll suddenly get a feeling mm -hmm. or a memory or that person that's passed away will kind of come back into your head or into your heart. And in that moment, I always tell them, you know, recognize that moment and then just talk to them. 
talk to them like they're sitting next to you talk to you know because i th i think they are i think they're there i think that's the moments when they kind of i think they're always there but when those moments hit where you kind of have that feeling or that sensation that's the time that for whatever reason you need them closer you need Correct. that hug from that person your whether it's your mom or your grandpa or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be but i i'm agree with that too yeah you've been super interesting to talk to <laughs> I loved how Ingrid was really nervous doing the interview ahead of time. She was convinced that she was going to not have anything to talk about and she was going to struggle. But, of course, she did a wonderful, beautiful job. Thank you. Um, tell people where they can find your stuff. I know you're on Facebook. Yeah, I have a page on Facebook under Lady Luna. Mm -hmm. And my phone number is 801-869-0577. Mm -hmm. And... You can find me every last Saturday of the month at the Soul Fair. Yeah, you do the Soul Works with us. Well, not with us. I do it as well with you uh, at the Dancing Crane. That's one of my favorite fairs. Yes, it is. It's a pretty, it's, pretty it's a neat. fair with a meaning. Yeah, it's not the fair. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's something more in there. Yeah, Betty's done a wonderful job with that fair. Do you have other things coming up this summer? Any other big events? Any other fairs? Well, I'm going to be here in Tuella on the 4th. Yes, we're with coming the... to do one out here on the 4th. Yeah, and then I'm going to be on Saturday in Ogden. Mm -hmm. And what is coming? Then it's coming the Sioux Rendezvous, but that's still organ try to be organized. Mm -hmm. What about any other vacations or trips? You do anything I'm going in summer? October. I'm going in October to Santa Fe. And then I meet my friend, and we are going to drive to Roswell. Really? Yes. I'm fascinated with aliens and all that. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So, I want to talk about that a little sure. bit. So <laughs> that whole thing, because there's a... From alien to alien, right? <laughs> yes. There's a whole big kind of subsection of energy, spirituality, where people get super into aliens and the mm -hmm. not just the belief that they're real or that they're out there, they're walking amongst us. I mean, it just goes... When I say it goes crazy, I don't think it's crazy, but you can get lost down that rabbit hole mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. you know... So what is your connection or draw to aliens? What What, what attracts you to it? <laughs> oh gosh yes i have been have encounters uh -huh. since when i was 10 years old and you remember them i remember really well yeah and later in life in between my oh my gosh late 20s and 40s i had a lot of dreams mm -hmm. but you know, people talk of adoption and all that scene. Yeah. But I never been, I was always, if you want to put it like equal. Uh huh. So I have tasks to do with them. With the aliens? Yes. Uh huh. I always was like, uh, instead, you have to pick up that. I was the one to say, you pick it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, is that, is the communication, the learning? Uh huh. It's different how you receive that energy exchange mm -hmm. that is with the other energy. You know what I mean? I know. It's yeah, like I you have you chocolate mean. cake and a strawberry cake. Both are made of dough, right? Yeah. But it's, it's, it's different in that way. Um, most of my meditations, I go way into the universe, into the stars, uh -huh. into the planets, not passing by, into there. I love, I have a Moldavite stone. Mm -hmm. I love it. I cannot tell you, oh, I got this information, this is what I have to do. But something in the process for what I'm doing readings is boosted up. Really? It's, 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 for me, it's hard to explain because it's kind of ingrained on me mm -hmm. and manifest in whatever I'm doing. From regular work to energy work. So you feel kind of upgraded. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it's like maybe I just plug, charge, and you know, keep going, <laughs> you know, more intense or in different way. Uh -huh. I've been learning nowadays. I'm more, I can identify more who has that energy. Really? It's more like, hmm. And it's like, I wish I can tell. And I cannot tell this because I respect. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? 
but something comes in the conversation and then it's, that's what I'm talking with you. Somebody said to me, I said, okay, so now we can talk. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's really interesting. It's, um, I believe that it's life and I don't believe it's because they have three eyes, four eyes or whatever. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a life, period. Yeah. You know? See, I think that for me in my sitting around and thinking and studying and pontificating on all these different things, I got to the point where I think the universe is bigger than infinite, mm -hmm. where it's so incredibly vast, faster than we can even imagine or con, you know, kind of wrap our brains around that there is enough space out there for everything to be possible. Correct. And so I think aliens, it doesn't matter. I, I, I don't care what you call them. I don't care how you think about them, whether you think they're real or not, whether you think that they're, for me, it's all real. For me, I think that mm -hmm. there's enough space out there and enough different dimensions and realms and things like that. Basically, is that the dimension, the, the change of <clears throat> dimension from where you are now uh -huh. to go to that. It's like when you move through the veils. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same in the dimension. Yeah. And I think, you know, all of that vastness and all of those different things that exist out there in that space still stems from the same source of energy mm -hmm. that we do. And so that's why we're able to communicate or connect or, do you know what I mean, have sort of experiences where, because I'll have the same thing where I'll have a meditation or some sort mm -hmm. of out-of-body experience where it's like, I so know that I was somewhere. It looked somewhat familiar to earth at times, but yet it didn't and it felt different. And, you know, you tell somebody who's who thinks you're crazy and they think that you made that mm -hmm. all up in your head. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's like, no, my energy was there, which means I was there. Correct. And it was just a different part of this universe. And other, it doesn't matter to me. I don't get lost in trying to understand and explain away. <laughs> I just think it's cool and I enjoy it. Actually, I, it is. <laughs> yeah. I try to gleam from it what I need in the moment. But in the end, I don't have to have some sort of clear definition of what this experience was or what that was. But that would be cool to go to Roswell. Yeah, yeah. That'll it's something neat. that I tell a lot of the clients when they, say, when they say, how I can get the connection, how I can do this, is just be open and receive. Yeah. Don't ask why. But going to that point is very hard. Mm -hmm. Because for human nature, say, but why this? Why that happen? Well, how come, <laughs> you know? But when you go to the moment, okay, okay, I'm here to receive. Yeah. Let it in, you know? Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Ingrid. You're welcome, Craig. It's been so Craig. wonderful talking with you. I think we've had done a wonderful, you did a wonderful job. You do too. Yeah. You, you, you inspire me, calmness. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Well, have a wonderful, beautiful day. Thank you. You as well. And thank you, everybody, for listening to the Energy is Love podcast. I don't do yoga. Just breathe. La bruja. <laughs> Your gift is sleeping, giving more coffee, and that's it. <laughs>